Hello, Loyal to Law here, all you viewers of YouTube, and this video is going to be the part two of the Arnis, Cali, or Eskrima basics. So again, for practicing purposes, you should have a stick like this. And for practicing purposes also, if you're not going to hit on anything for now, any kind of stick that's less than 30 inches long is also good. So just to train your wrist and stuff and also your forms. But eventually as you progress, you might want to buy the proper stick, which I explained it on the first video. So first off, for review, you set your body on a, on a fighting stance. So my body is in a 45 degree angle, like so, facing here, while my eyes is facing forward. In this video, my eyes is looking at you, audience, while my body is in a 45 degree angle. And this is what you call the bladed position. And the name implies because you're in a blade-like position where your opponent will find it hard to hit you because you're almost in a straight line. And you're not entirely in a straight line so that you can reach your opponent also when you hit or block or deflect your opponent's hits. So that's the fighting position. In any fighting position, in this case the Arnis, if you're a right-hander, again, you hold your stick with your right hand, which is forward of you. And your left hand is your non-holding stick hand, which is close to you. Now, as I mentioned from the first video, the uh, non-holding stick hand is very, very important, even though it's not holding a stick. It's just as important as with the hand that you're using to hold the stick. So on a side view, as I mentioned on my first video, that this left hand right here, this left arm, the elbow is close to my ribs so that I can easily block any kind of attack, punch or kick that's um, going to my ribs. And my hand is in between my chest, my head, and my stick. Uh, logically speaking, your hand is close to your head and your chest so that you can protect your body. You can do blocks or whatever, deflect any kind of attack. But near the stick, why have your uh, non-holding hand be near the stick when you, have a, when you have the other hand holding the stick? First off, if you're, uh, let's say, defending hand for simplicity purposes, if your defending hand is very, very far from the stick, it's very close to your chest and your head, but it's very far from the stick. When you create a strike, it creates an opening. And you don't want to lose that opportunity to lose that opening. So when you strike your opponent, it creates an opening. You can choose to strike your opponent again with the stick, but it takes time. Hello. Yeah, one of my cats. That's Kogar. So, it creates time when you decide to strike again your opponent with the stick. But that small opening, that's where the defending hand comes in. When you strike your opponent, as I face here, when you strike your opponent, creates an opening, you have, a, instead of having only one option, you have two to three, five options. So, striking the stick of your opponent or striking the opponent you can dash in and use your left hand or your defending hand to grab the other opponent's stick and then do another strike so as i do it side view we strike create an opening either you can dash um, use your defending hand to go to that opening hold the stick of your opponent and then do another strike Second option, as I mentioned earlier, will be striking your opponent again with the stick, just using a different angle. Or, when you strike your opponent with the stick, he attacks, you block with the stick, you hold the stick of your opponent, and then you strike again to your opponent right here from this position. So it'll be one, you attack, you block, hold the stick, then you strike your opponent. So that's the 
a really huge advantage of using your um, defending hand, your left hand or your right hand. As long as your hand that's not holding the stick, it's close to the stick, close to your chest, your midsection, close to your head for protection, and your elbow is close to the rib so that you can easily block your side. Now, um, I'm going to explain to you another strike. Be on the first video, the first strike that I explained to you is just using the wrist and just doing this kind of strike. Remember, there's a huge difference between doing this, which is telegraphic, and just using the wrist. Notice where I place my defending hand. See? Now, the second strike that I'm going to show, and that you'll, um, hopefully that you'll learn and train with, <coughs> is what I call, personally call the V-strike. The V-strike is just, um, doing, drawing a letter V in front of you. So, it'll be like, like so. But you're not really, um, drawing a letter V. It's called a V-strike because when you hit here, you kind of retract the stick, then you hit on the other side, making a letter V. So when you, uh, if you watch the first video, obviously I'm already reiterating the first video because the basics are uprooted there. Rooted there, sorry. So if you're going to use your wrist, that'll be the strike on where the stick hangs, like so. Now to make a V, you just twitch your wrist to the other side. So if you twitch your wrist to the other side, so in front of you, I'm going to the left side here, in my view, your stick should be in this kind of position. Then you relax your hand again, so that the stick will relax again on the space between the thumb and the index finger. So if you're the viewer, you strike here, like so, you twitch your um, wrist so that your stick will be in this kind of position. Then you relax your hand, let it loose, and be sure to let the stick hang between the space of the index finger and the thumb. So as I do it one more time, twitch loose, then do it again, circle your wrist again to do the first strike, twitch, then let loose, then to do the second strike from this position, you just again close your hand, mimicking the first strike. So the first strike will be like this. Your second strike will be just the mirror image or the opposite of your first strike. So if you're going to combine those, be like that, you let loose of the stick, roll it over on your fingers, then strike. Again, strike, let loose on the stick, let it roll on your fingers. Make sure that the stick is between the space, is placed between the space of the thumb and the index finger, then strike. If done properly, it'll look, it should look like this. So again, that's still using your wrist. So there you have it. I'm very thankful to all of you audience once again and um, this is going this is again the part two of the Arnie's Cali or Screamo basics and I hope that you enjoyed this video and for those of you who are enjoying martial arts always train safe and always train hard for those of you who are viewing thank you very very much God bless you all and take care